Hello right. and welcome to uh, this week's episode of Crack in the Bat. Uh, Crack in the Bat is brought to you by the Irish American uh, Baseball Society, a society for Irish people who love baseball and baseball people who love Ireland. And we are, uh, the theme so far in 2022 is before we go forward, we're going back. And I'm delighted uh, that when he was with us last year, we asked him if he'd come back and explain and, and go over what how his year was. I'm delighted to be welcomed by the former head coach, uh, of the head manager of the Israeli national baseball team, Eric Holtz. Coach, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Taking some time out of your day, although it's probably cold where you are. It is cold, Sean. It's always great to be back with you guys. I, I've been looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, it's cold and we're expecting some snow this weekend. So uh, right in the middle of it. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, I was doing my research and, you know, Facebook's a great place for finding out stuff. And I was just thinking, you know, 2021 for most people was, you know, I won't say crappy year, but with the pandemic and everything else. But I was looking down the list of things that Eric Holtz did in, in 2021. So obviously, as you said, manager of the Israeli national team and you get to go, which is one of the reasons we we'll talk to you. Um, you have a new role now, your grandpa to the, the beautiful Riley Rose. Your son wins a championship with his team in, in Czechoslovakia? No. Uh, uh, yeah, Czech Republic, yeah. yeah. You get your knee replaced. You get, inducted <laughs> in, you get inducted into the Westchester Community College Hall of Fame. Um, and, and I see you hobnobbing at a Mets game with Steve Cohn. Not a, not a, not a bad year. Not a bad year, you know, kind of a crazy year, Sean. I, I, I uh, there were a couple times I, I, I felt like I needed to pinch myself. I, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you know, one of the things I always say is I, I don't really know what I want to do when I grow up. And because of that, I, I just try and cherish every day and, 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 you know, just passionate about um, making the most of every day. And then, you know, before you know it, one thing leads into the other. And yeah, 2021 was just, you know, such a, an incredibly uh, wonderful year. And, and, you know, I've had other people say, you know, how does it get better? And, 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 you know, the answer is I, I, you know, I hope things just continue and people stay happy and healthy, but uh, I have no complaints at all. This was an incredible year. Um, the best job that I've ever been given, uh, you know, is, is, is pop pop to Riley. And, uh, you know, and everything else kind of just fell into place. And I'm seven weeks post-surgery with a new knee. And uh, I'm hoping to be back playing, you know, baseball uh, by early summer. And, uh, you know, everything else is, uh, you know, life is great. I, I did leave that one out. You did win. You won some tournament. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't say what you won. All you said was it was great to play with my son. So I was like, oh, well, it'd be nice if you get, I, I tried to blow up the trophy to see if I could figure out what you had won, but. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm blessed. I've, I've been able to stay healthy enough, long enough to play baseball with both of my sons. Uh, but this fall, we, we, uh, we played softball together as well. Uh, just kind of, you know, for, for shits and giggles and, and, and uh, just had a blast in the fall. I, 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 I know what you mean. One of one of the uh, things I got to do, one of, I guess, my dreams was uh, I got to bartend with my son. Okay. Which is something. Two of us behind the bar, you know, just two ball busters in one bar is probably probably uh, more than enough, you know. Um, so just now, you, we, 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 we'll touch on a lot of the topics, but I did so. So Brett, Brett went to Columbia. Brett went to Columbia, uh, lost the last two years uh, of baseball due to COVID. And uh, he's just a wonderful young man and, and, you know, did everything that he could do to put himself in a position to be successful. And, um, you know, I, I just felt that he needed an opportunity to, uh, to play. And, and, you know, at 22 years old, why are we going to rush him to go out and get a job? Uh, his Columbia degree wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, it'd be waiting for him. And, uh, you know, he went to a new country, didn't know anybody and, uh, just had a wonderful time. He spent about five months in, uh, Ostrava, which is about 20 miles South of the Poland border. And, uh, yeah, he had a great season. He hit just under 400 and, uh, won a championship and, uh, yeah, just a great experience for him. 
Now, did you get to go over there, or was it not possible? So I, I stole a crazy weekend um, right before the the, the Olympic uh, training started. Um, because of COVID, the country was closed down. I had to get a, a letter from uh, the president of Czech baseball um, basically inviting me there because they needed me. Um, Czech baseball needed me in the country, and I basically <laughs> stole – a long weekend, Memorial Day weekend. I flew there on Thursday, uh, arrived there on Friday. I saw a game Friday and Saturday in Ostrava, which is three and a half hours from Prague. Took a, a train back to uh, Prague on Sunday, watched one more game, and then flew home on Monday. So I was able to see three games. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, because actually when I saw that by Colombia, you know, I mean, I, I, I will always say and continue to say one of the things I miss most about Foley's is the people. And one of my favorite people was Brett Peretti, uh, um, a class guy, class, phenomenal class guy. coach. You know, and, I mean, for, yes. for, for an Italian, as I used to say, you know what, Brett, you might be one of my favorite Italians. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, actually, it's it's kind of funny. We had because there was kind of a sort of a I was stuck in the middle of a rivalry between him and Jim Penders, okay. uh, another okay. great guy. Sure. You know, sure. and uh, so they would send me stuff, and uh, so Jim sent me. Uh, um, a, a um, UConn baseball hat. So I'm wearing the hat. I take a picture of the hat and I send it to, to Jim. Well, it just turns out that Jim is about to check into a hotel in California with his team for a, for you know for a spring training tournament or what have you. So this picture pops up, and as he's checking in, who does he see standing next to him? But Brett Beretti, and he says, "Huh, see?" And he shows him the picture, and you know, and I I get. So I get a text from Brett saying, dude, not very happy, you know, not very happy here, you know. So so I sent him back the text. I said, I said, uh, I said, Brett, scroll down. I was wearing a University of Columbia golf shirt. Oh, that's I awesome. Said, the hat's coming off after I took the picture, said the shirt's staying on all day. But he is and, he and is a, not only two great guys, two phenomenal baseball coaches. Uh, Penders is 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 truly awesome and and Beretti is the type of coach that you want to hand your son to who's just going to build him on and off the field. And uh, he, he's just an awesome mentor for my son. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I, I you know, I've talked to a lot of people. I'm like, the, one of the things I can never understand is why Brett Brady is still a Colombian, why he hasn't been scooped up, but he loves it there and it's a great program. And, you know, it's, uh, I actually got a couple of times and I'm actually, uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks, I just got a text from Jim Penders yesterday. They're coming down to Florida. So he's invited me to go and watch that. Uh, he said, if I want to watch meaningful baseball games in February, that uh, love it. I'm I love it. You. So listen, I, I, I'm, I've been dying to talk to you ever since the Olympics. The last time we spoke, I think you were getting ready to the last warm up. You had the game at the, where the Ducks play. I think you played the, the yeah. NYPD. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so I mean, you know, I mean, going to the Olympics under normal circumstances is, is a special, but, you know, bring us through your journey from, you know, leaving, uh, where you're at to getting to Tokyo. You know, Sean, people want to hear the, the, the cream and roses. I'm going to give you what reality was for us. Um, it was torture. Um, we were testing for COVID every day, um, every day from the first day we got together. Um, and as you know, with a lot of these antigen tests, there's a lot of false positives. Um, so, you know, at times, uh, the players were nervous. Are we going to be able to get there? Um, people don't know this, but um, the night of the NYPD game, Danny Valencia tested positive. And um, Danny lost it. I mean, lost it emotionally. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, obviously we needed Danny to compete. And, 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 and the whole team was just so upset. And, and then Ian Kinsel decided, you know, I'm not playing, and 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 he shut down, and then you know somebody else shut down, and and um, we ended up having to rush Danny into the city for a PCR test, um, which came back negative. And and these are the things that nobody heard that we were going through for two weeks prior to leaving for Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, so. I hate to say it this way, you know, baseball was almost secondary. It's like, yeah. are we going to be able to do this and get there 
and and have a full squad of guys there. Um, how's this going to work? So so we finally get to Tokyo. Um, on our airplane is the Dominican Republic and half of the Team USA. And the entire airplane is quarantined in the airport in Tokyo for five hours, awaiting all of our PCR tests when we got to Tokyo. Um, everybody was all clear. But, you know, again, it was just full of emotion. You know, God forbid somebody gets, you yeah. know, uh, uh, test positive. They're going to be basically locked up in the airport. Um, five hours later, we get through and, and finally, 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 we show up in the Olympic Village. Um, what would normally be one of the most incredible experiences of anybody's lifetime um, was challenging. Um, again, we had to test every morning uh, in the Olympic Village. We, we did a PCR spit test. Um, and, and again, false positives. Why? Well, the first couple of days, guys were brushing their teeth. If you brush your teeth, you're going to test positive. Um, um, so, so, you know, the second you test positive, they don't care why they right. just take you and basically put you into isolation and, and, and wait a couple of hours and test you again. Um, the only time we were allowed to leave the village at all was for practice or games. So, you know, as nice as the village may be, we were almost like prisoners um, you know, for, for, you know, whatever, 14, 17 days, whatever long we were there. Um, and, and it was, it was just such a shame, Sean, because, you know, you wait so long. We, 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 we qualified in 2019. We can't wait for this experience. And, and, you know, I remember in the gym, you know, I, I'm an early riser and, and, uh, you know, I, I'm in the gym one morning and six feet away from me is uh, Novak Djokovic and oh, wow. five feet to the right of me is Luka Doncic and 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 uh, Jose Bautista, Melky Cabrera. They're working out. You can't even go talk to them. Mask on everywhere. Basically just waving to people. Um, couldn't really talk to them because God forbid anybody gets sick. Um, it wasn't really just you. It, it, you know, God forbid yeah. the whole team would get sick and shut down. So we were really, really limited um, as to uh, interaction, you know, which is what so many people and, and the human factor of sharing this experience uh, with, with the greatest athletes in the world. You weren't allowed to see them. You weren't allowed to talk to them. Um, you know, we would go to practice and, and we had, uh, you know, probably a two hour practice pre-scheduled uh, for the first three or four days when we got there. And it would be the type of thing where, let's say Mexico was on our field before us. They would be in the third base dugout and then we would be shuffled in through the first base dugout and not allowed to be in each other's way, in each other's right. path. So then they would clean the third base dugout so it was ready for the next day. Each team uh, was given by the Olympics like six or eight milk crates full of baseballs. Baseballs were not to be shared team to team. Um, it, it was just a crazy, um, disappointing uh, experience from the personal aspect, right? The personal um, um, looking forward to, to interacting with, with athletes. Um, the, the, the cafeteria um, was about 100,000 square feet of the biggest food court you could imagine. They had every food there in the world. And it was two floors, so 100,000 square feet on each floor. Wow. Um, and and um, you had to go get your food with your mask on, and it was just when you sat down um, that you could take your mask off to eat. So they had these plexiglass, you know, huge plexiglass. Uh, um, uh, dividers in between you. So, you know, even if you sat across, it felt like you were in prison, you know, like, like you couldn't talk because the barrier is about six feet high. And, and, you know, it'd just be like, hi, hi, how are you? I mean, you couldn't even talk to people. So, you know, that part of the experience was brutal, Sean. So, so you waved at a lot of very, very uh, famous people. 
waved at him, but I, I you know, it, 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 could you imagine just, you know, being in a, in a, yeah. in a cafeteria with just the greatest athletes and people you recognize and just not being able to say hello and, you know, just kind of, you know, just kind of suck, to be honest so with you, you know, so basically you, you, you missed out on what they call the Olympic village experience. Totally. No, 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 totally. Yeah. Even within our building, we, we shared a building with, uh, Ireland, uh, Sweden, um, and Israel were all sharing the same building. And it literally was just kind of masks on, hi, getting in the elevator, really not a whole lot of uh, uh, congregating. And, and uh, so that part of the experience was, was heart-wrenching. Okay, I, before we go on, I, I have to ask you, I'm surprised so no one has mentioned it, but what were the cardboard beds like? Um, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm 56 years old. I, you know, I'm an old guy that's broken and, 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 I, you know, I need a little more than a cardboard bed, I guess for a young kid, uh, it wasn't terrible. Um, you know, the, 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 the engineering behind it was, was unbelievable. You know, the fact that the entire village was going to be recycled. Um, uh, but if I'm going to spend two weeks somewhere, I, I, I like a little more than cardboard. So, so we won't. So if I come to stay at the host household, I will not be sleeping on a cardboard bed. I promise you that won't happen. I was a bit, a bit worried about that. Um, so, so you know the 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 experience. I mean, I I was wild because I saw that you know you you were the first Israeli team to qualify for anything in the Olymp anything since the seventy six soccer team. Any team sport. Yeah, any team sport, team sport I mean. since nineteen seventy six. That's correct. That's, that's that was pretty impressive, you know. So I mean, even like the opening ceremonies, you know, I mean, it was so it was a little. It wasn't you didn't get the experience. What? Well, what? even the even the uh, the opening ceremonies, we weren't allowed to go. The, the the coaches weren't allowed to go. They kept it limited to the players, so I didn't even get to experience that. I watched it on TV with the rest of my coaching staff. Hmm. Well, that's gotta suck. I mean, that's one of the highlights of going. Agreed. You know? Agreed. And um, and now the games, uh, how how different was that? I mean, so now now you get to the best part of the entire thing. The games were 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 phenomenal. I mean, um, coaching at that level, playing at that level uh, against some of the best teams in the world uh, was just amazing. Uh, all the other managers were incredible. Uh, just, just, just gentlemen, you know, I enjoyed my time with, with, with Mike Sosha and Benji Gill and, uh, uh, you know, the only team we didn't get to play was Japan, but, uh, you know, uh, Robbie Cano's dad was an assistant coach on, uh, on the Dominican and, uh, you know, the level of play was great. Yeah. It was bizarre, um, not having fans, um, you know, at all in the stands, but it also made it you know, Sean, like old fashioned Sandlot baseball, man, where, where there was such chirping back and forth, uh, you know, from the dugouts and, uh, you know, it was just, it, it was so much fun. It was the, the baseball games themselves, uh, were a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we, we, we accomplished what we wanted to, um, we went out there and we played well, we competed with everyone other than the one Korea game. Um, you know, but, but, you know, the toughest thing for us, and I don't have to tell you this, you know, when you lose your arguably number one pitcher, four yeah. pitches into game one with the torn, uh, you know, uh, UCL, uh, wasn't UCL, it? um, you know, there's no coming back from that in a short tournament like that. Cause then we had to ask guys to do things that they weren't used to doing. And, uh, you know, that being said, you know, we, uh, we took Korea to, you know, 10 innings and, yeah. uh, you know, we lose on a hit by pitch and, you know, come back and, and, you know, compete with, with the USA, at least through, you know, four or five innings. Uh, but again, my, my, my bullpen's depleted by that point already. Um, you know, we have to come back again and, and, you know, that's, uh, kind of where we, we laid an egg against Korea, but, you know, we, we were ready to go against Mexico and, uh, that was an exciting game until, uh, they bring in ex Met Oliver Perez, and we just you know beat the heck out of him. We scored about five or six runs in in, in an inning. I don't think he got out of the inning, and uh, you know we put ourselves in a position uh, to get to 
a medal game. You know, we, we were actually playing the Dominican Republic uh, for the right to play in the bronze medal game. And, uh, you know, I still say Jose Bautista was, uh, was, was, should have been called out on a, on a, on a strike three. And, uh, you know, that curveball froze uh, everybody. And uh, of course he goes on and, and, and the next pitch, he hits a single up the middle and uh, the Dominican walks off on us in the bottom of the ninth. But, you know, I, I couldn't tell you how proud I was for the way we represented ourselves. And, uh, and you know, five out of the six games, I thought we played pretty good baseball. Yeah. Well, I mean, Oliver Perez is 102, you know, at this stage. I mean, listen, he's 102. They brought him in to, to be a lefty specialist and two or three lefties in a row just, you know, torched yeah. him and uh, just put a big smile on my face. Yeah. Soft, soft tossing Oliver Perez. With uh, more herky jerky motions, I mean, it's it's basically you know, um, you know, so, so it's probably too soon to answer this question, but what do you think the Olympic and the, the team making the Olympics uh, will do for baseball in Israel? Sean, it's it's such a tough question. Um, I've been dealing with this since two thousand seven when I got drafted to play in Israel. Um, and the, the hopes behind the Israel Baseball League in 2007 was to uh, rally interest uh, in the country. Um, and, and that was a one and done for the Israel Baseball League. Um, fast forward to the World Baseball Classic in 2017, and Israel was, you know, just incredible. Off the hook, um, surprised everybody. And, and that's what kind of led to, to us doing what we did. Um, but the sad truth is, I don't know if it's going to do anything. Um, you know, no matter what you say and what you do, baseball is not a prevalent sport in Israel. Um, they, they, you know, just finally built um, uh, a new field there. Um, it's a multi-purpose field, but it is predominantly a baseball field, and they're working on building more fields. Um, my hope is uh, that Israel baseball, along with uh, their educational system will start introducing um, baseball in school, in kindergarten, in first grade, so that the actual Israeli uh, students can learn the gauge and not rely on the expats, the people that have moved yeah. to Israel from the United States uh, to bring their love of baseball there. That, that remains to me the biggest challenge. Yeah, I mean that's 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 I guess a prickly subject that we won't go into the whole business of trying to balance the expats with the native borns and you know so that it doesn't get taken over. Before we finish with the Olympics, I do have uh, one question: Did you shave your goatee in the middle of the Olympics? I did, I did, right in the middle of it. Um, I just wanted, I, and it was right before the, the the Mexico game. I just felt like I wanted to change the mojo up a little bit. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm an incredibly good looking ball guy. I was going to um, say you're a handsome man without the goatee, but did you, did you get the wife's permission? Was Tracy on board with this? Tracy is good with anything I do after 31 years. We, we, we she's my best friend and, and, but she right away asked, you know, what did you do? I just felt like I wanted to change things up a little bit. I'm not a superstitious guy at all. Um, but, but I think the guy's got a kick out of it. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did do that. So wow! So you shave your mustache on your head, brave man. Yep. Everything. Brave man. So listen, we're running out of time, but there are a couple of things. Yeah, I, I noticed how you basically uh, glossed over the meeting with Steve Cohen. So you're not going to be the hitting coach for the match. So, so I got an email that Steve Cohen wanted to meet me. I was incredibly flattered. We had a 40 minute Zoom call. Um, we hit it off really, really well. Uh, he then the next morning invited me to a Met game. And I basically sat as his guest with him and Sandy Alderson for a game late in the season. Uh, we talked about philosophies. We talked about goals and life goals. And um, who knows, you know, maybe at some point I could end up being a, a you know, a, a, a consultant to him, you know, as needed. Very nice. I was kind of hoping that he might, I might get the call and he might be willing to say, hey, let's put Foley's into City Field. But I didn't get that call. I no, mean, still so. waiting. I'm still mm. waiting for that call. That, that, that. So before before we uh, before we wrap up, um, 
I'm going to I'm going to give you a guy's name, and I want you to tell me the first thing that comes into your mind because he may be the only baseball player um, who everything that has happened in the off season has been positive. Harrison Bader. What what comes to mind when I tell well, Harrison, say Harrison? It's a personal. It's personal for me, Sean, because I've known him pretty much since he was born. Um, his brother, his father and my brother worked together for 30 years and Harrison has had a tremendous upbringing, uh, surrounded by great people, great mentors. And what you see is what you get with him, uh, on the field. He's, he's an animal. I think, you know, if he can, uh, become a little more disciplined at the plate, he is potentially the next Mike Trout type of player. He's a five tool guy that can do a lot of things. Um, but off the field, he's a, he's a wonderful young man. And, and what you saw, uh, you know, with him filling in as a substitute teacher is, is Harrison. He's just, he's a great guy that loves the kids and, and loves being around the kids. That, that, that is, that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, coach, listen, I really appreciate this. I was going to say, I did, I, I did get a little giggle there. Yeah. Uh, you and I both have bobbleheads and whoever made them, God bless it. They made us a lot better looking than we actually are. But I thought it was kind of funny that, uh, you have, um, well, you have three. Bo you have your three bobbleheads next to each other, and uh, the, your office is the only place in the world where you are taller than Aaron Judge and CC Sabathia. <laughs> well, you I'll know. tell you what, John. Off the air, we're going to have to. Uh, you'll have to send me your address, and I'll I'll put together a care package for you. Well, I, listen, I do appreciate that. I will say one thing. I will say one thing. Um, being be, becoming Facebook friends with you, I mean, obviously, a lot of what you do is geared towards the you know the 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 kids on the area and what you do. But I will say, I don't know if you're writing them yourself or whoever you're. Uh, if Tracy's responsible, but whoever writes your quotes and comes up with your motivational quotes, it's like, yeah, I I, I believe in that. You know, I did say, you know, I mean the. Uh, the one that was kind of a little Mickey Calloway was, and you know, the one who said, if you lead with love, they will follow. And I was like, is that like you're going to love all your players? But I mean, I would just, I mean, for me, I, you know, I would just switch out love with respect. I mean, when, when, when I was with Foley's, my thing was, you know what, you know, it's just, if you, if you, but you know, you get, you, you know, it's kind of like the old scenario of, you know, you treat people how you want to be treated. I mean, obviously as a coach, it's a little bit different because you're motivated. Motiv no, but it, but it, but it, but it shouldn't be Sean. So here's the thing. And if we have time, I'd love to finish this. Number one is a lot of the time I can't sleep. So yes, I thought in, in deep thought at four, four thirty in the morning, and you'll see a lot of my stuff posted about five or five thirty, And that's why that's number one. Number two is to be a successful coach for me means establishing relationships and showing that you care not only on the field. So it's on and off the field, getting to know your players, understanding what makes them tick and what doesn't, so that when things get tough on a field, not everybody wants to hold the baseball in the ninth inning. Not everybody wants to be up down a run with a man on third and two outs. I need to understand the inner workings not just as a player. I need to know what you're made of. So when, when are we going to do, you know, when are we going to see the Eric Holtz motivational uh, speeches across the country? I, mean, I, I could started. be your manager. We could go, you know, I mean, listen, you get the Jewish guy and the Irish guy together, you know, we can, one thing we can do is talk. It's, oh, for sure. You know what, Sean? I feel cheated every time we talk because I feel like you and I could sit here and talk for hours. Oh, um, well, listen, uh, you know what? You get to Florida or I get back up there, We will. that is definitely going to happen for sure. Okay. You know, I mean, obviously, okay. you might want to come to Florida. It's a little warmer. but No, not by much. It's been raining for three days in a row here. I think I'm back in Ireland. But, Coach, I'm glad we got to do this because, I tr I'll be honest with you, Ever since, you know, ever since we left on all your posts and stuff like that, I, what you just told us today is exactly what I wanted to know. I mean, it's all right to say, oh, it was wonderful and all the rest of it, but I wanted to know what, I mean, I, I you know what, congratulations, and I know you stepped down and uh, uh, your good buddy Nate Fish has taken over. Um, you know, it, it's, but I was curious to know, I mean, I feel, I feel, I feel happy and, and disappointed at the same time, happy that you had the experience and disappointed for you that it wasn't, the true, you know, uh, and I'm glad you didn't ask me to spell uh, 
uh, Dantich or the other dude because the, the, that's that's thankfully Irish names are a whole lot easier to spell. You know? So listen, <laughs> well, you coach, know, thank you for doing this. We really we will definitely will get together very soon. I promise pleasure. you that. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for having me and uh, go Ireland baseball. Awesome. Thank you. Take care.